Hi, I'm Miranda Wright, and this is day 98 of our 120-day Upper Room Prayer Campaign. And today we're going to pray for the faith to pay the price, to walk out the callings and mandates on our life with integrity to live a life of legacy. And so to this, I ask you today, what is the price of your soul? Because it might be less than you think. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 says, Let our conversations be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I awoke one morning a few years ago. And as I thought through a long list of the things that I needed to do for the day, the things that had fallen behind for not having enough time in the day, work obligations, ministry obligations, family obligations, house and yard work obligations, counseling requests, media ministry obligations, outreach obligations, study time, prayer time, running and tending to a church, a family, a church family, the list goes on and on. Because that in the midst of all of our busyness, my husband and I didn't have enough time to make money or enough money to make time. My mind raced through my list of obligations trying to prioritize. Because you see, my family and I, we pastor a church in a poor rural community that simply couldn't afford to support a pastor in the way that most churches do. So there is no porsonage, no staff, no amenities, no salaries, just a need and a mandate from God to fill it. So as I lay there that morning, exhausted, trying to quickly prioritize my day for maximum efficiency, my mind drifted and I started to think about how nice it would be for my husband and I to financially be in full-time ministry and not have to pull double duty working secular jobs and still doing the full-time work of running a ministry after hours. Because we have been offered as much in other places, in other ministries, but not here where we knew God had placed us and positioned us, and commissioned us. So my mind began to race across the concepts of this, quote, other plan. How much we could get done with more money, more time, more resources. And in that moment, the Lord spoke to me and said, what is the price of your soul? Because for many, this was it. I knew what he meant, and my heart sunk in shame. So many times I had seen people professing to be ministers, claiming to be building the kingdom of God, but really doing nothing more than building their own kingdom at the expense of God's plans and the souls of men. Many of them had been called of God to be ministers, yet they wanted more than what God had given them in that moment. They wanted better than where God had placed them for that season. They wanted to graduate without the classroom. They wanted to elevate more than they were willing to be humbled. Refusing to accept that God only elevates the humble, but Satan will gladly feed the pride of the greedy. So they compromised. They became men pleasers rather than God pleasers. They stopped following God's plan and started following the money, the attention, or the approval of man. It's such a slippery slope and many are they that fall to it. So today I want you to recognize this tactic of the enemy that the first step towards this slope is not being content with what God has given you and with where he has positioned you. As I repented that day of my lack of faith and contentment with the position that the Lord had given me, I rose and was very saddened to see once again as the Lord reminded me of the path that this kind of thinking can lead you down. As I saw a very renowned and well-known mega church, one that was known for its amazing worship selling out for fame, money, and the pleasing of the wicked at the cost of offending God. As I saw their performance that they called worship, I looked at scantily dressed worship leaders provocatively dancing around a stage intentionally decorated as a nightclub, ushering in a spirit that was by no means holy, and it broke my heart as the people reveled in mocking God in what claimed to be the very house of God. But they were not worshiping a God who is holy. They were worshiping themselves entirely. They were not celebrating 
the holiness of God, as all the saints and the elders do day and night before his throne, declaring his holiness. They were celebrating their flesh and their sensualness and their skills and their talents and all the glitz and the glam and all the while trying to sell the lie that they were doing it to win the world by becoming friends with it. When God says to be friends with the world makes you the enemy of God, he calls us to be set apart from it, to be the light in the darkness, to be holy as he is holy, to pay the price, to take his side, not to sell out the gospel for a price and compromise. But in reality, it should be no surprise that so many would esteem the things of this world of greater value than the things of God, saying that they are using the things of this world to win the world, when in reality, they're really using the things of the world to win the church and declaring that the things of the world are of more value than the things of God. How many claiming to serve God today are really serving mammon? How many claiming to be ministers of God would still minister if the money stopped? If the attention and recognition stopped? If the spotlight went dark and the crowds disappeared? Sadly, not very many, I fear. Yet some would. The true, the genuine, the faithful, the obedient, the remnant. Those who truly serve God will do it at all costs, even their own life, esteeming both obedience to God and the souls of men of far greater value than all the riches of this world. Hebrews 11 verse 24 says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the eternal reward. So I ask you again, my friend, what is the price of your soul, the thing that you are willing to compromise your obedience to the voice of God for? Is it a title, a platform, a job, fame, money, a pretty girl, a cute guy, a drug, a drink, pride, your plan instead of God's plan, a moment of pleasure as Esau did? All of these prices fail in comparison to the one paid by Jesus Christ at Calvary. Yet so many insult his sacrifice by esteeming these petty things more valuable. And it all starts with not being content with God's plan for you. My friend, never tell God that he's not enough. He will not abandon you, but you can choose to abandon him and walk away from his will seeking for something you hurtfully and blasphemously deem better. Yes, it's that serious. I implore you, trust God's plan and will at all cost. No great man or woman of God has ever been remembered through history for doing anything less. Psalms 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. If we truly believe that he is there and he is with us and he is able, that he can make a way where there is no way. Why would we be covetous or envious of any other thing? We've got to believe that he knows what he is doing. I have seen so many walk into open rebellion and sin and lose the anointing of the Holy Spirit because they were not content. They weren't content in their marriage. They weren't content with the people that God had placed them with. They weren't content in the position that he had commissioned them to stand and possess. They gave up their land and their inheritance because they were not 
discontent. And believe me, it's rooted in a lack of faith and a spirit of ungratefulness. It's rooted in selfishness. Jesus said that we have to be willing to count the costs, to pick up our cross and follow after him. He never said it would be easy. He never said that it would be about us for our glory. Any decision we make in selfishness is a decision that was not made by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that all those who will live godly, they will suffer persecution. He said, pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow after me. The cost of true biblical Christianity is selflessness, self-denial, laying down our life and our pride and making every decision First of all, for what is best for God, and second of all, for what is best for all those around us, putting ourselves last. The Bible says to esteem others better than self, to always think of others in everything that we do. My friend, biblical Christianity is never about you. We have to be willing to count the costs because you're either going to be willing to pay a price or you're going to sell out to receive a price. So what's your price? Are you more willing to give than to receive? Are you more willing to pay out than to sell out? Because as much as we may try to hide it, justify it, or cover it up, God sees all, knows all, and will repay all. There is no price paid that he cannot pay back and more. He told Peter as much. So be willing to sacrifice, to trust the will of God in your life. But likewise, there is no price that you can sell out for that will be worth losing the favor, grace, provision, blessing, and anointing of the Lord. Because though you may cover it for a season, there is nothing hidden that he will not bring to light in the sight of all men. And that is the price for ease, pleasure, or attention that is truly not worth paying. Let him reveal your secret story of faithful, selfless humility and not a secret story of lustful, selfish vanity. Because all will be revealed. That one thing is true. But what will be revealed? That part is up to you. Luke chapter 8 verse 17 says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come to light. So today, my friend, I say to you, Fear God and be wise. Pay the price and be content with the promise of eternal life. Father, we come before you today and we pray in humble submission and repentance for all of the times that our heart and mind has strayed from you. Lord, let us not be swayed by the lust of the flesh or the promises of this world. Lord, let us have faith with the position you have given us, the commission that you have placed us in, that we might seek your face daily and walk in the power of your grace because that we have cried out to you, because that we have come to you in the secret place of prayer as Jesus did in the garden of Gethsemane and been strengthened by you there for the task at hand even when it's not easy even when it's not pleasing to the flesh even when it comes against everything that we can understand help us to walk in your plan your will for our life and not to take things into our own hands if there be any that are listening that have fallen to the temptations and lies of the enemy and have walked away from the things that you had for them because they were not content they allowed covetousness to creep in and they gave in to sin because of a pretty face or because of attention or because of vainglory or because of a stage or because of mammon or any such thing. Lord, I pray that they would fall on their face today and repent of it and make it right. Get before you and be willing to put 
all of that wickedness out of their life. We cannot continue in the sin and say that we have repented of it. Repentance means to turn away from it. And if you know that you are in a relationship that God has not called or blessed, you cannot repent of it and stay in it. You've got to deal with it. If you are in a job or a ministry that you know the Lord has not called you to, but it is pulling you away from the things that he has called you to do. You can't just say, I'm sorry and call that repentance. God said, you weary me with your continual asking for forgiveness. We've got to determine today to turn away from the things that have caused us to stray from his will and path for our life. Count the cost, pay the price to get into right standing so you don't miss your destiny. God, we humble ourselves to you and recognize that your plan is perfect, that you are wise, that you are true, that you know what you are doing. And we want to be used by you. We want to have the power of your anointing to see the yoke of bondage broken off of people's lives. But for that to flow, we've got to be willing to pay the price and to not sell out for a price because nothing is of greater value than the blood of Jesus Christ. He paid paid the price for us. Let us not count it an unholy thing. Let us not declare it unworthy. Let us not blaspheme or mock or insult the Lord God Almighty. There is nothing that is better than him, his will, his plan, his provision. God, we thank you for it. We thank you for everything you've brought us to and brought us through, Lord. We thank you for all of the ingredients and seasons of our life, that you work all things together and there is purpose for even the struggles and the trials, that you are sharpening us, that you are cultivating us, that you are threshing us, that you are preparing us to be used mightily by you. And if we are not content in even the hard seasons, we will step out of them and get out of position for the things that you have coming. We won't be prepared. We'll take matters into our own hands and we will bring shame and reproach and disgrace to your plans. God, we humble ourselves before you and say, you know best, your wisdom is perfect. Your plan is perfect. Your timing is perfect. We praise you for it. And when the hard times come, we will stand and declare that your will is worth we will endure and we will be patient and we will thank you and praise you in the waiting and we will be content even in our thoughts and our conversation knowing that every trial and temptation that we go through is only building a greater weight of glory that will be revealed through us unto you when you step in and it finally all makes sense. We give you praise for it and we humble ourselves before you and say, Lord, use us however you see fit for your glory. We submit and praise you for it. Determined to be content in both provision and in persecution, in blessing and in testing in growing and in sowing, in the hiding and in the revealing, in the season of preparation, having faith that it's storing up grace for the season of demonstration. 